Thank you, President. I think it is a fitting tribute both to Professor Fanning and to the launch of the Centre to have the President here this evening. So it's, it's um, uh, as again, a, a very important tribute to the significance of, of today's launch. Um, our next speaker is adjunct Professor Michael Buckley, who is the Chair of the Advisory Board of the Keynes Centre. And uh, many of you will know Mr Buckley. Uh, he has extensive expertise and experience in the financial professional, uh, retail and uh, public sectors in Ireland and internationally and has been an adjunct professor giving of his time and expertise to economics at UCC for many years and I know has been very uh, central to the development and most recently of the, the, the ideas behind the centre and, and the uh, bringing of those ideas to fruition to today's launch. I know that um, adjunct professor Buckley will talk about how some of Keynes' less familiar ideas provide the intellectual foundations for our new centre here at UCC. Um, and I think it's also worth remarking that I believe the uh, senior members of the Keynes family are not just aware of this development, have expressed their, their pleasure and their support of the establishment of the centre in the name of, of their ancestor and also that we will see some of those very important people with us uh, in Cork participating in our events. And again, connecting to the life of, of Maynard Keynes but also his intellectual ideas and, and to see all that, that come through personal contacts and relationships I think would bring it really to life for everyone. So I'll, I'll hand you now over to, uh, to Michael Buckley. Thank you. I'm here actually to flog the book. <laughs> I'll, I'll come to that afterwards. Circulate among you. Um, so I'm actually speaking on behalf of uh, of Gavin Reed and Barbara Rappaport, who were on this advisory board of me. We had our first meeting today, and it was such a good meeting that we only got halfway down the agenda, and we have to start again when this event is over. Um, lots of people that we have to thank from our point of view. Uh, starting with the President, uh, going on to Ursula Kilkelly, going on to Nora Geary, and I have a list here which you'll find at the back of the programme for today of all the people who have been a tremendous help to Connell and to the rest of us in getting things up and, board, up and going. And, uh, you know, it's about making it happen, which the President did in very critical ways. It's about encouraging it, uh, which is a continuing thing. And where Nora in particular and several others that, uh, you know, I, I won't mention their names, played a very important part in. And it's about funding. And there's some medium term funding there, which hopefully will enable us to get up and to a point where we can wash our face on a year to year basis going forward. So thank you very much for all of that. So far, we will continue to need that broad base of support across the university that we've got so far. So, what's the Cairns Centre? That's the strapline, a bold strapline transforming how you think. And, and believe it or not, there were days of debate put into coming up <laughs> with those few words. Um, but really, in more, in more ordinary language, I suppose, it's, it's taking thinking on transformative learning, which was developed within the walls of UCC, in the MBA programme, the DBA, and subsequently in, in, in a number of undergraduate programmes, bringing that same thinking beyond the walls of the university uh, to the broader world of business practitioners and saying, yeah, we can actually help you to be different, to be better, using that approach. Um, so the first thing to be said about the Cane Centre, it's, it's for business practitioners of all sorts. Whether that business is entrepreneurial, corporate, not-for-profit, public sector, whatever it is, it's anybody really, it's any type of organisation. Um, and it's really to help the people in those different um, types of businesses to address or to become better, to increase their capacity to address the complex problems that they have to wrestle with on a, on a day to day-to-day -day basis in order to make good decisions. So it's about helping those people to and challenging those people to bring about changes in their mindset 
and how to connect those changes in their mindset and how they approach problems to changes in behaviour. So that's, that's, you know, hopefully a not too complicated version of it. So the next question is what the hell has Keynes to do with all of that? Because that reminds most people of Keegan rather than Keynes. So what Keynes has to do with it really is that first of all he was an amazing and fantastic thinker, not just as a, as a, as a theoretical economist, but as the book that I'm going to flog to you later on <laughs> makes very clear, there were seven or eight different amazing facets to his life. And this, this book actually is different from a normal biography in that instead of going in a linear way through his life, it takes each facet and says, well, how was Keynes? How did he look from that facet? Um, so uh, the thing about it is that um, he was a man, for instance, apart from the great theoretician, he's the man who was the delegate, the UK delegate, to the, the, the whole Versailles Treaty discussions after World War I. He was the guy who put together the whole structure of reparations after World War I. Um, later on in his life, he was the guy who came up with the IMF as the solution to a whole lot of issues that really could only be addressed on a multilateral, international sort of basis. And one of the things about him actually is that he had the ability in tackling issues to deal with huge amounts of data. You know, whether he was doing economic theory or doing practical big public issues, big policy issues, he had this amazing way of being able to deal with vast amounts of data and crunching it all down into something that was incredibly convincing and relatively straightforward relative to the chaos of the data. And one of the ways in which he did that was he was absolutely brilliant at building networks to discuss, to debate. So as Gavin was reminding us this morning, he would start in, under his, his envoy hat, he would go out and he would figure out who were the key people whose brains he wanted to tap into and whatever role he was in. He would get out his diary day one. He would draw up the list of people he needed to talk to about the issue. He would go through that list uh, one by one. He would then get into group, group discussions. And out of that, he would find that his mind was uh, nudged a bit to the left. He'd have a starting point, but his mind got nudged through that dialogue to the left, to the right, whatever, until it all became very clear what the right answer was. So he had a very, I suppose in old fashioned terms, there was a Socratic element to the way in which he did his thinking. And he was a great believer, I'm sure Connolly are going to put the quote, and I hope you don't mind if, if I just give the concept that one of the things that I think is really terrific about Keynes and his approach to life and problems is that he said that the hardest thing of all was to leave behind you, leave the past behind you, the model, the way you think about the world, leave that behind you. That's what you inherited, that structure, the way data, in which data was presented, etc., analysis conducted. An awful lot harder to leave all that behind you than to come up with the new idea and the new theory. And I think that is very much a thought that's relevant to all our lives and whatever, whatever um, roles we're in. So why Keynes in this transforming how you think? Because he went on a journey in his life that started in a particular point, which was formed by the, the received fundamentals of economics, but also of the way society thought. And he gradually found a way of leaving that behind and thinking in a very fresh way. So we want to take this, you know, in enlarging people's capacity to, to address the, their own issues and their own decisions by actually relating it back to Keynes and how he went on his journey through his life as, as an amazing guy. Now, it's not all about Keynes, is the next bit. So, you know, what's the centre doing? Why Keynes? It's not all about Keynes because there are two or three or four or five other wells that this centre will be going to for water as we, as we, we, we develop our thinking and do our work. Um, one of them you'll see in a video in, 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 in a few minutes' time, Bob Keegan, who would be an essential, not just a well, but a water course in terms of, you know, it's fundamentally this centre is about 
Haynes and Keegan, and then some others. So the some others will include Hannah Arendt, uh, Edith Penrose, and Peter Drucker. Um, we're hoping um, that the centre over time, I was very glad to hear to, uh, Ursula that you, 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 were, you talked about the context of, if you like, the, the part of UCC out of which this comes, because one of our hopes is that over time that we will ensure that ways of learning and ways of enlarging their thinking that students at UCC would have learned in the university, that we will help to bring that into their professional lives and their careers so that they won't see university as something they did and left behind them, but that, that way of thinking actually has relevance to the roles that they, uh, that they go into. Um, so the last thing I wanted to say is that, you know, we will be developing a number of programs, uh, a couple of which we have, have, have are down the road with over the next few months. Um, the initial one that we're starting with is, is the Cain Centre Book Club, very much in the spirit of Cain. He was a great reader. He said you should always be reading books and you should be surrounded by even more books all your life. Somehow, I think he felt as I do, that maybe if you don't read them, you might just absorb a bit of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, and the other thing is that in that context, we've put together for everybody here, I don't know whether they've got them yet, panel, have they? Some bookmarks, this to do with the thought, you'll get them probably on the way out. We have some really brilliant, and as, as, as the president was so kind, and I think Rice right to compliment the, the, the centre team for the, the exhibition inside. We have a number of bookmarks here, five bookmarks that everybody will get as a little present from today, with some really terrific quotes. Um, so the last, last, last thing I want to say is um, uh, we've had a few trial outings already. They've gone very well. We have more programmes that we're developing. The, the more, how will I say, I don't want to say the word narrower, but the, the more academic, academic side, the non-practitioner side, but they're all connected, um, of the objectives is about several books and a number of articles. And we are shaping, if you like, the teams. We, as in Connell and Laura and Martha, are shaping the teams for those. And there's already, I think, really good work has been done even in the first few months of that. So thank you very much for your support today. Uh, I'm very, very optimistic that this centre has real substance. I think it's great to see, I've seen over the last 12 months, if I may say so, Connell, your energy is being renewed over, over the last 12 months. The man is full of energy at this stage now. And uh, you know, I think this is going to be good. This thing is going to be good for Connell. It's going to be good for the rest of us and it's going to be good for UCC. Thank you very much. Yeah.